all the powers, hallelujah, he thought of us, hallelujah, and he took the fall, he took the cross for us, hallelujah, what a beautiful song, may God bless you, at this time, uh, we're going to the youth message, brother, people will go, so we'll go with the message. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who was touched by that worship? Who was touched by that worship? Uh, do we believe the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living within our mortal bodies? How many believe that today? Yes. How many believe that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living within our mortal bodies? Yes. So we, we got to act. We got to live in accordance to that power, right? Yes. And I just pray over this congregation. Thank you for that beautiful worship. Like you can see how much tears, and how much goes into that just worship to Jesus Christ, not worship to ourselves, worship to him. So today, uh, before I start, let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer, invite the Holy Spirit. Yes. Holy Spirit, we invite you, Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, praise the Lord, and thank you, Lord, for bringing us here uh, to the sanctuary, Lord. Thank you for gathering us here today. Holy Spirit, just fill this place with your fire. Lord, let your fire be um, poured out upon all these individual uh, saints here in this congregation, Lord. We just pray over each and every person, Lord, that yes, fill with the Holy Spirit, Lord. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is within our mortal bodies, Lord. And we're going to see you soon, Lord. We're, our mortal bodies are going to change to immortal bodies, Lord. Father, Lord, help us strengthen us as a congregation, Lord, even despite the, the enemy attacking us day after day. Lord, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to strengthen us, Lord. Father God, I just pray that my words, Lord, just be strengthened by your Holy Spirit, Lord. And I just pray that somebody understands what I'm saying, Lord, and let this get to their heart, Lord. I thank you. I put all these things into your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So my message for today is going to be, uh, it's, it's simple. It's a simple message. And I was thinking about this over the past couple of weeks. but the, the, my title for my message is our feeding will be our feeling, right? Our feeding will be our feeling. What we feed, what we feed on throughout the day, on a day-to-day -day basis, on an hour-to-hour -hour basis, will be how we feel. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to say that again. Our feeding will be our feeling. So, and Another part of my message is um, losing our focus to focus on Christ. So I was understanding for the past couple of weeks that if I look, if you look at yourself, if you look at your own life throughout the day, it's either going to impress you or depress you, correct? If you just focus on your own life, it's either going to impress you or it's going to depress you, right? And you're going to look at your past. You're going to look, look, you're going to look at your failures. Look at, you're going to look at the future. You're going to look at your fears, your worries, your anxieties. But church, I want to encourage you, instead of looking at ourselves, we need to lose ourselves. And we need to be intimate with Christ. Our focus needs to be fully on Christ and not ourselves. If we can do that, if we can lose our focus of ourselves and focus on the perfect man, Jesus Christ, then we're going to feel much better, right? If we feed only on ourselves, we're going to be depressed or we're going to be too impressed with ourselves. So I just want to encourage you, let's focus on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is within our mortal bodies. I say that because, honestly, I've been thinking about that verse, like, am I really living like that? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Am I really living with that power? Or am I just living church to church, Sunday to Sunday? So my first point was that what we look at during the day definitely will impact the way that we feel. You turn on the news, you turn on social media, you turn on the stuff in the world, it's going to depress you. Everything, all the prices are expensive, the news is shooting after shooting, violence after violence. It's no wonder why we feel depressed after scrolling on our social media or we look at the, uh, we look at the news all day long. It's going to depress us. And then when we look at anything other than Jesus Christ, we won't be fully content. Have you ever realized after you scroll on social media for hours and hours or you even watch that, that, um, that show or you 
you looked at the news for even five minutes. You feel depressed. You feel anxious. You feel worried. But when you look at Jesus, like when you're in the house of God, I don't think much, much of the worries I have on a day-to-day basis, they don't come. They don't come in this place. This is the house of God, right? So when we're surrounded by the Lord's presence, we feel good. We feel great. When we're surrounded by the news, social media, all day long, it just depresses us. We have no, our, our vision, our purpose just limits. It's like what our pastor said past couple of weeks. If you look at your problems, it's going to depress you. Correct. If we look, personally, myself, I've looked at my problems over and over again, and I found myself depressed. And that's not honestly saying, even the past couple of months, the enemy will try to get you by letting you focus on your past, letting you focus on your problems, your trials, and that depresses you. But I was reminded by the Holy Spirit, look at me, the champion, the author and finisher of our faith. How many believe, how many believe that? How do, are we just sitting here for no reason? Are we sitting here for no reason? Or are we fixing our eyes on the champion today who can restore all the brokenness? No matter what the brokenness was, who can restore that? Who can set you up on a good foundation? How many believe that? How many believe that? Really? Amen. Let's turn to Psalm 16, verses 11. It says, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Okay, so it says, In thy presence, in thy Holy Spirit, when you spend time with God, That really is the only satisfaction. We were built to be satisfied on God, not on social media, not on the news, not on movies, not on anything other than God. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. When we focus on God, the pleasures will come. The joy will come. But when we look at the world, for some reason, why do I feel empty after looking at the world over and over again? Why do I feel like I'm why do I feel like I'm not getting what I want? It's because God didn't design us to be satisfied with this world. Yeah. Our satisfaction needs to be 100 percent Jesus Christ. And that's the revelation I got. Okay, God, if I want to stop, if I want to stop looking at my problems, if I want to stop dwelling on the past, if I want to stop worrying about what people have said about me or this and that then I really need to get into a place where it's just all about Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's just all about Jesus. Not the news, not your, not, nothing else. It's just Jesus. Amen. Amen. And 2 Timothy 2 verses 4. Let's just touch on this verse real quickly. 2 Timothy 2 verses 4. I found this verse uh, very interesting. Let's just turn to that. Can someone read that for me? 2 Timothy 2 verses 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Amen. 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 2 verses 4. No man that warreth entangleth, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Personally speaking, Many a times I'm, I'm entangling myself with the affairs of this life. I forget that I'm a soldier of Jesus Christ. I forget that I have the devil to face on a day-to-day basis, correct? Instead, I'm looking at the news and it's depressing me, even though I told myself to look at Jesus Christ. I'm looking at social media, even though I, I know that it's going to depress me. As a soldier of Jesus Christ, we need to get in this mindset where it's only about Jesus Christ. We're fighting our enemy, the great adversary, the devil. And the devil is literally laughing at us when we're on social media, when we're on, uh, when we're looking at the news. He said, that child of God could have been in the prayer closet. Instead, he's just looking at that thing that's going to depress him, right? So 2 Timothy 2 verses 4. Don't get entangled with the affairs of this life. As much as that's uh, easy to say, it's harder to do. But let's try our best to just focus our eyes on worship. Right? Worshipping the king of kings. What good is it to dwell in this world? The world is already looking at how much problems we've had since the beginning of this 2022. The problems are just getting way worse. But how about I focus on the perfection? What's perfect? What's not going to change? 
It's Jesus Christ. Amen. You can all change on me. I can change on you, right? The old president, everything can change. Jesus Christ, the only thing that won't change. I would rather just focus on that than anything else. Amen. 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 So I wanted to encourage you, congregation, not just from like a, a, a literature point of view, but let's fix our eyes on the champion, Jesus Christ. Then I believe we will have joy when we go home and we won't be depressed. Then I believe we'll be able to leave church or leave our jobs feeling at least satisfied and not bitter and angry, right? When we wake up in the morning, let's fix our eyes on worshiping the King of Kings instead of worshiping the news or worshiping the president. Amen. Amen. My second point. Now, we all, we all eat food, bread. We need air to survive. That's all true. Now, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Very clearly. He says, I am the bread of life. So what I learned from this is that, okay, you give me the word of God, right? So Jesus doesn't just want me to, to read the word of God. He wants me to eat the word of God. In other words, we're eating Jesus Christ daily, right? Eat, read, don't just read the word of God. Eat the word of God. Eat the word of God. I know that sounds weird, but for us spiritual-minded people, sit in the prayer. Sit in your place of prayer at your desk. Read the Bible till you feel peace, till you feel joy, right? Amen. Have you ever read, read the Bible before work and it's like two minutes and you just feel like, oh, whatever, I just, I don't know why I did that. I don't feel anything, right? <laughs> right? What I learned is that, wait, when Jesus says to eat the word of God, eat till it produces something in me. Do I have peace after I read the Bible? Do I, am I still thinking these uh, thoughts after I read this Bible? Has there been any change after I read this Bible? So I read, so I realized, okay, I'm going to read the word of God, even if it takes me an hour, even if it's just two sentences, I'm going to really feed on it. What is the Holy Spirit trying to tell me, right? And that's what Jesus said, eat. Don't just read it, eat it. Let it satisfy you, right? Let it give you the pleasures of life that only God can produce. Amen. Amen. How many people believe how many truly people believe this word of God yes, can make believe. you happy, right? Yes. This word of God can make you happy. Yes. Although I run away from it time to time, I realize this is the only thing that can make me happy. That's, that's all there is. John 6, verses 35. Let's turn to that. John 6, verses 35 says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Okay. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. In other words, I shall never be hungry again. I shall need nothing more. Jesus, I'm honestly able to say that you're the only thing that makes me happy. I may get blessed in my life. I may, I may be weary about my future. Jesus, you're the only thing that can really make me happy. Where's the evidence? John 6 verses 35. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. How many people believe that? Is that why we're in church today? So we can go home starving? Are we, go are we going to leave this church starving? Right? Or do we want to leave this church filled? Do we want to wake up every day and sleep every night filled? Right? So really, let's examine our appetite. Let's, are, we, are we malnourished Christians? In other words, right? Are we malnourished Christians? Are we starving Christians? Has anybody ever thought about that? We learn about nutrition in school, right? We learn about what foods eat. We know all the best recipes to make us healthy. But are we are we really are we malnourished with, when it comes to the kingdom? Are we really satisfied by the word of God? Amen. Let that let that sit on all of our thoughts today. And Matthew 4, verses 4. I wanted to turn your attention to this. When the devil tempted when the devil tempted Satan, he said something very, very um, cunning. Matthew 4, verses 4. The, the devil tells Jesus, if thou be the son of God, command these that these stones be made bread. That's interesting because Jesus earlier said, I'm the bread of life. Right? 
And he's also questioning the identity and authority of Jesus. Verse 4, however, says, but he answered it and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I'm not just gonna, I'm not just gonna live off my um my bagels that I eat during the week, right? Or or yeah, whatever it is. I'm not I'm just not gonna live off of that bread in this world, right? There has to be more bread. That bread is not another like Italian bread that you get at a restaurant. It has to be the word of God, right? It has to be this. That has to be the, the solution to feed me. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That's, come on, what is it? Amen. God's word. Don't just read the word of God. Eat it. Eat it till you feel happy. Eat it till you till you feel like you're full. Till you're full. Eat it till you can forgive one another, right? And don't just leave that place malnourished Christians, starving Christians. Going off of the little appetizer Christianity. This is, this is not no malnourished Christianity. Like, you know, like appetizer Christianity. We need to eat. We need to, we need to eat the main course, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 How many people believe that? Amen. Our main course is Jesus Christ. We're not going to be malnourished Christians when we leave this building. And that's a, that's a message for myself. And I'm going to I'm going to close out right now. But my third point. All that we have to realize is that Jesus is our champion. I know many people have heard that song, um, You Are My Champion, right? Um, Giants Fall Down. And such a powerful song. When I think about that song, I just thought about Hebrews 12, verses 2. What does it really mean that Jesus is our champion? Does that mean anything to me? Or am I just reading that word? Am I just reading and not eating the word of God? Let's turn to Hebrews 12, verses 2. Can someone read that, please? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, before the joy that was set before him, endure the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. And we just heard in the worship how, how perfectly it tied. Um, crucified, laid behind a stone. He lifted, died. He was rejected, alone, trampled, you know, trampled like a rose. And all these beautiful things we see about Jesus Christ. If we look to Jesus, the author, he started our faith. Who started our faith? It was not a preacher. It was the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus. He's the only one who can finish it, right? He's the, in other words, he's the only one who can make us happy. Who else is going to make us happy? Regardless of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I realized in my life, and I'm realizing as I'm 20 years old right now, like, Jesus, you're really the only thing that makes me happy. Even though I try to run away from you sometimes, yeah. even though that is true, right? Yeah. And now I realize why all the older older folks told me to focus on Jesus. Because that's the only thing that makes anyone happy. That's the only thing I realize that really makes me happy. And it's just an encouragement for all of us. It's hard to all the crazy things that are going on in the world. Half my day, I'm focused on these other things other than Jesus. That's me personally speaking. This is a message for myself that if I want to achieve purpose and happiness in my life, then I need to look at the champion, right? I can't look at the news. How do I feel after I watch the news? Depressed. How do I feel after I look at my past? Depressed. How do I feel if I look at my future sometimes? Weary. How do I feel if I look at Jesus? Blessed. Restored. Healthy, nourished, not malnourished, right? That's the question I want to ask you. Do we want to? Do we all want to be malnourished Christians, really, or do we want to be fed with the vitamin of the Word of God, the nutrients, the protein, all the the main course meal, the Bible, the Holy Spirit, prayer? That's what I want. I want to be nourished in the presence of God. And my final verse, John fourteen, uh, verses twenty-seven. If any, of us, if any of us are feeling like weary today over all the things that happened this year, over our future, I'm talking to myself, the past, the future, all the worries. Sometimes we may be afraid of the enemy, what he's going to do. We may think the enemy is stronger than God sometimes. But 
John 14, verses 27, it just says something very powerful. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it. Okay. That's what I just, that was my whole message. The world can't give you the peace. The world won't give you the peace you're looking for. So what's the solution? Look to Jesus. Is there any other solution? Look to Buddha, look to Muhammad, they're all dead. Look to my career, look to the car, look to my future, look to people. Can't trust them, things are going to change. A tornado might come and sweep it all away. Right? Or you might die tomorrow with a stroke. How do you know? How do you know? John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Thank you, Jesus, for the peace that you've given unto us. Wow. I don't have to do anything for that. Right? In this world, I have to do, I have to study, I have to do everything else to achieve what the world can give me. But when it comes to Jesus, he just gives it to me. How great is our God? Right? I just got freely. It's a gift. What a good God. Not as the world give it. Okay, so don't focus on the world. Focus on Jesus. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Amen. That's what I want to close on. I know that this world, has, this world has been very tough. As I look at this world this past year, honestly, I'm getting more and more. I'm getting more and more concerned about what I see in the world. Getting older, I just see the world is just. <laughs> The world is just so messed up. Why is the world so messed up? Sometimes I'm in my room and I question, why is the world so messed up? <laughs> Jesus is coming. <laughs> exactly. But I really question myself, even though I know these things, I'm like, why is the world so messed up? Like, why is it everywhere I feel like I'm headed towards some dangerous path? Right? Time to go home. That's all I can say. And let's prepare for the coming of our Lord. And focus on Jesus. And let's try our best. As, it's, as much as it's easy for me to say, just focus on Jesus, yeah, it's very hard. But we're going to try our best to just focus on him and get our happiness from him and not in the world. Amen. May God bless you words. Amen. Thank you, William, for the beautiful message. May God bless you. Hallelujah. The question that he asked, what are you feeling? Garbage is in, garbage is out. What are you feeling? Are you feeling the spiritual food? The word of God? Praise God. For the, for the uh, infant, you feed the milk. When you mature, you feed with the meat, the protein. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what he said. I don't know how many understand that you have to eat the word. Yes. Let it digest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God, and it'll come out from your mouth to be a blessing for others. Hallelujah. The Bible says, it will instruct you, it will come to you. 